Toolbox. That's what we're talking about today. This is a product that, while it looks like it's meant for a PlayStation or an Xbox, actually sits on top of your desk. And there's a bunch of dials and buttons and knobs that help you control Photoshop, Lightroom, Final Cut Pro, Affinity Photo, or really any, any software that you want. Hey, this is Scott Weinkiewicz, a storyteller with a camera talking about all the things photographers like you and I are thinking about. And in this video, we're talking about Tourbox. This bad boy lets me control my computer, edit my photos with what looks like a game controller. Before we dive in, I just want to say this is not sponsored by Tourbox, but they did send me this for review. So thank you to Tourbox for sending it my way. But as you know, all my reviews are completely honest. Okay, so before we dive in, I just want to give you a quick overview of this beautiful product, because it is beautifully designed. This product was a Kickstarter campaign that did very well. I believe it did like $160,000, $180,000, something like that. It did really well. On the bottom, there are four feet. There's four feet that are rubberized, so it doesn't slide around on your desk. It is connected to your computer by one cable. It's USB-C on the back of the tour box, and it goes to regular USB 3.0 into your computer. On the face of it, you've got a turn dial right here. You've got a up-down dial, which also has a button if you can push it. You have a knob right here that cannot be pushed, but there is a knob right there. There is a big button here, a little button there, and then you're sort of up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, B, A, start. Did I get that right? And then you've got two like A, B type buttons, a big button here, and then a littler button there, and that's the tour box. A bunch of buttons. Oh, did I say the one on the side over here? I said it looks like a game controller. Now the cool thing is that each of these buttons and dials can be configured however I want per software. Upon setting it up, you do have to go through a process. It is very straightforward. I ran into an issue, contacted the, the tour box team, and they walked me through it, and it installed, no problem. It does work on Mac and Windows. The software, the user experience doesn't feel very intuitive. It feels very rose. And what I mean by rose is if you ever order from a print lab that uses the rose software, which is JavaScript based, you know that clunky, ugly interface and it's just not very pretty. And that's basically what this felt like, but for this. So software wise, it's not the prettiest thing, but it does the job. The other thing with the software is that, and they're working on this, is that at the time I'm recording this, in order for you to switch what software this is being used for, you either have to preset one of these buttons to switch modes. Let's say the right button is for Lightroom, the left button here is for Photoshop, if that's what you wanted to do that can switch Torbox between those two softwares. Or you take your mouse and you go up to the software and choose manually what you want it to work for. Because I mean, I'm going from Photoshop to Lightroom to Final Cut Pro and back, so that's, I'd have to program three buttons if I was to do that. But in their software update that's in the works, which they couldn't send me a copy of because it's still too early on in beta testing, what is coming is automatic detection of what software you're in. So if you're in Lightroom, it automatically switch to the Lightroom to the Final Cut, to the Photoshop, to the Affinity Photo, to the Ecamm Live, to whatever it is that you are programming. One cool thing is that you can actually set presets and save those presets and then share those presets with others. Very useful for the tour, the tour box community to share presets, so that's cool. Okay, so I am going to connect this to the computer so you can have a look at what it does. We're gonna go over there. I'm not gonna walk you through a full photo edit or a video edit, I just wanna show you it works. Now, what you're seeing here is the Tourbox console. This is version two. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, version, I think 2.1 is going to have the automatic switching between software as it detects whatever software you're in. But in the meantime, what you need to do to switch what you're in, what preset you're using, you just literally click on that preset. And then at the top, it'll say Tourbox is connected now to Photoshop. Then Tourbox is now connected to Lightroom, and then Tourbox is now connected to Final Cut Pro, and whatever preset you set. 
You can make whatever preset you want where you just basically hit the plus sign and you can start with a Photoshop or Lightroom preset or just start with the blank one, name it, and you've got a blank preset. And you can see it does come preloaded with Photoshop and Lightroom. You can drag to reorder these as you want. And on the right side, you have all of the uh, buttons that you could preset in this software. And of course, when there's a drop down, it means you can actually do something else. So for example, by default, the knob is just the selected slider. So if I have, if I clicked on tint and I uh, start using the dial, then of course, it'll start doing the tint. Now, if I hit the tall button, which is on the right side of the controller, you can see the tall buttons right here, and I adjust the dial, see those two buttons right there, then I am uh, adjusting the sharpening amount. If I hit the short button, then I am adjusting the post crop vignette amount. And of course, you can modify these to be whatever you want. You can see when you click into it, there's tons of commands that you could preset. So this can take you time to set it up, right? It can take you a lot of time to set it up if that's what you want to do. Or you can just use the preset. You can, of course, um, add in anything else you want. You got the top button and the side button. So again, these are holding down those buttons and twisting the knobs. We're going to talk about this over here in a second. I'll talk about that in a second of how you can hide that and change it and stuff like that. You also have the scroll button, right? There's a scroll knob. You can see it right over here. There's a scroll knob. And again, you can make it so if you push a button and hold it and then start scrolling, then it does something else. And all basically any button and dial combination, you can make it do something other than what it is, including the up downs if you want. You can really fine tune every little thing. And as I mentioned early on, you can also make it so that if you hit uh, a, a specific button, it'll actually switch presets. So if I want to uh, basically set this button, this C2 button, and I want to make it change presets, you can see here I can choose switch preset, and that's it. I'm going to hit OK. And now if I go in and I do it, it's going to actually switch preset. And of course, it switched to Photoshop when I did that, which means I now need to set this button again to switch to switch presets. But I'm not going to do that because uh, I'm probably going to switch it back. I'm actually waiting for the software to be adjusted so that I can, uh, you know, change that instead. All right, I just took that away. I'm going to um, go here and show you what this is, this little overlay. You can see if I go to uh, the menu, there's a, a HUD, a heads up display. That's what this is. You can actually close it or you can show it. And of course, you can go to your preferences and you can adjust. You want the, the heads up to display to be light or dark. And then you can adjust the opacity so it's not too big, uh, not too bright, not too, not too dim. And you can make it bigger or smaller as well. And you can grab it and move it around out of the way. So let's say over here, if you're in Lightroom, you don't want it on the right side because that's where your developer stuff is. Let's say we want to do the highlights and shadows. So all I have to do is do the up down button. So if I hold down the highlights button and start turning the dial and you can see the highlights are being adjusted, right? And again, same thing, shadows, I can go, or blacks rather, we can go up, we can go left and right with the blacks. We can do the whites, right? We can adjust those. I can go down and do the shadows. And basically, without touching the mouse, just by turning knobs, I have now modified this photo using Toolbox. I find that the Toolbox presets, that the ones that came pre-installed, are not true to what they actually say. So some of these might take some adjustment. So for example, according to Toolbox, what the uh, short button should do is it should actually allow me to adjust the contrast. But when I push it and I go to do the dial, nothing actually happens. So if I do the dial, it actually is doing the vignette amount. It's not actually doing the contrast. So I feel like some of the descriptions that they put don't actually match what is doing in the preset, but that's okay because they can all be adjusted again to whatever you want. As a consumer, as a photographer who's wanting a quick solution, I don't want to go through and figure out what I want each thing to be. I want somebody to have already figured that out for me and I just have to learn what it is. And that's what I went into this with is assuming that Toolbox figured out what is best and they implemented it and the preset is ideal for Lightroom and or Photoshop and so on. But what I'm finding is, as you just saw, it's not exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, so, but the nice thing is there are a lot of presets available for Lightroom actually for Toolbox. And it might just be that a user's preset might be better than the ones that 
are packed with Toolbox. So I might try that instead. Now to install your own preset, what you actually do is you can actually go in and create a blank. And I'm going to say this is a test preset and call it blank. And then you click on the three dots and you can hit import. And then you're just going to grab that preset file that you can actually get from the Toolbox website. You can see here on the Toolbox website, you go to downloads and presets. There are a lot of presets available. So here's the one that came packed with it. There are three other <laughs> Lightroom presets, one of which is from January 20. 20. So I'm going to download that one and try that one instead and see how that goes. But you can see there's a bunch if you use Premiere or Capture One, there are actually presets for you there as well. People are making a variety and some of them are in different languages. So whereas this one might be uh, in one language, the other one might be in Japanese and so on. You can see this one is in English. There's probably duplicates of these just in different languages. <laughs> they even have one for Clip Studio Paint. I don't even know what that is, but that exists. So overall, I am happy with Toolbox. I think the product is very well built. I think it's a software that needs a little bit of updating. I feel like the presets need some sprucing up. The presets for Photoshop and Lightroom that come built in. But otherwise, uh, I am happy. I am going to start looking at this other Lightroom preset that I just in, uh, imported and see if it's better than the one that came built in and see if I can go from there to adjust it to my liking. But the nice thing is you can personalize it. You can make it how you want it to be. So if you are looking for a solution that makes your job for editing photos or culling photos easier, you want a physical product, then check out Toolbox because maybe it's a good solution for you. It doesn't take up a lot of room and I feel like it really could solve a problem. Um, I, I, I feel like the hardware itself, like I said, is very well done. It's just a matter of getting the software up to par with the quality that the hardware has.